Hey everybody, welcome to Health Line. I am Gregory Zarian. Okay, so November, which we just went through, is known as Movember. Movember is Men's Health Awareness Month. So here's my question. Men, how much do you talk about your health? Uh, if there's something you're dealing with, do you have a conversation about it with your wife, your significant other, your family, your friends, do you talk about it? Here's the truth. Men do not talk about their health as much as women. Why is that? Is it ego? Is it nerves? Is it shy? Is it got to take care of the family? So here's what I decided to do. I decided to bring in one of my favorite doctors, and he's my doctor, urologist Dr. Kamyar Ibrahimi, and we're going to demystify a lot of the things that we men do and don't do. Good hey, Greg. I, I just saw you. How are you? Good to see you. Good to see you, and here's what's great about me seeing you is you gave me a, you're doing great, congrats. You know, it's really important to have that conversation uh, that you just brought up. Men do not want to talk about their health, and I think it's partly cultural, partly that they're the breadwinner and they're expected to be strong and not, and not complain about stuff. Uh, I can tell you my dad was the same way, uh, or is the same way, uh, and so... But it doesn't mean that we cannot bring up the conversation and, and we, we cannot be proactive about it. So I'm glad to be here to talk about a few things that are my favorite. Well, one thing that I want to bring up, which I think is so important, Doc, about us having the conversation as, as you know, my father had prostate cancer and it's in my family. So I have, an important, I have a date with you every year. And we do the, we do the physical exam, we do the TSA exam, we do the blood tests. And we have extensive conversations. You'll say, what has changed, what hasn't changed. And I'm grateful that we have, this past couple weeks ago, I got a thumbs up because I'm doing everything that you asked of me to do. Thanks, Greg. Uh, I appreciate the, uh, the trust. And I truly appreciate the fact that I have this opportunity. You know, prostate health is uh, centered to my heart also, as I lost my grandfather to, to prostate cancer. And so uh, when he was going through his trials and tri tri tribulations with prostate cancer, and I was, I was a resident and then a fellow, et cetera, um, it, I, I resolved to be the, the, the pro prostate cancer's worst enemy. So uh, talking about prostate cancer, um, it is the number one solid tumor uh, in men, uh, and it is something that's diagnosed by 260,000 thousand times this year for uh, men in the United States. Uh, having said that, it's not a death sentence, and if uh, proactively caught early, uh, treatments are multivariate and survival is excellent. Uh, so I think one of the things that you're, uh, you're mentioning is that once a year, you don't have to see necessarily a urologist, but you, uh, men have to see a physician get a PSA test and get a rectal exam uh, to get their tr prostate checked. Um, and that typically uh, will catch 95% of men with early prostate cancer, which is highly curable. Did you hear that? More Dr. Ibrahimi when we come back, do not go away. Welcome back to Healthline, I am Gregory Zarin and the conversation today is about you men and your health, and having a conversation about it. Uh, joining us is one of my favorites, my urologist, Dr. Kamyar Ibrahimi. Uh, Doc, I love that you said that you, it's all your, your, your passion behind urology, urology and prostate health is personal. You know, my, my passion hosting this show is personal. My mother passed away from esophageal cancer, and I did not know the signs and symptoms. My father passed away from multiple myeloma, but also had prostate cancer. So I have a date with you once a year. Why do you think men are so afraid to come to a urologist, see their doctor, and even when you said the rectal exam? You know, I've, I've said this before with you, that this will save your life, guys. Right. What, what is that, and what is the stigma behind it? You know, you know prostate health somewhat is very personal f for a lot of men, just like breast health is for women. Absolutely. And, and so they don't want to talk about it, and, and they don't want to necessarily bring it up. Uh, and, and it takes a certain personality and also a certain uh, tolerance to be able to openly talk about 
prostate symptoms. A lot of times, men with prostate cancer do not have any symptoms at all early on where the disease is, uh, is, is curable. So a lot of men would say, well, I don't have any problems. Why should I go see a doctor? That's precisely why you should go see a doctor because a lot of times prostate cancer does not have any symptoms early on. Late stage disease, you can have bone pain, you can have bleeding, you can have difficulty urinating, you can have kidney failure, but early on, no symptoms. Now, Real quickly, when you say early on though, is there something that we should look for? Yeah, so the things that we look for are the abnormalities of the PSA blood test and a rectal exam, which should be done by your physician. Okay, but if there's, if, if someone's at home and per se, uh, they're urinating frequently at night, if there's possible, possible blood in the urine, if there is, you know, the consistency of maintaining an erection changes, are those signs and symptoms to prostate cancer or is it other things? Yes and no, but I think those are very, very important symptoms that should be discussed with, with your physician um, in, a, in, a, in a very open fashion. A uh, lot of difficulty with urination, like you mentioned, getting up at night, uh, hesitancy or difficulty starting in a stream uh, or dribbling could be a sign of enlarged prostate from a benign process, not necessarily cancer, and that can also become an issue for men and cause them significant difficulties. You mentioned, you mentioned something about uh, blood in the urine. So blood in the urine can also be a sign of prostate cancer, but also could be a sign of other, other issues, cystitis, bladder cancer, kidney cancer, even something as simple as kidney stones. Um, and it could just happen once, and I've seen so many times when patients had said, you know what, I had blood in the urine a couple years ago, I never mentioned it to anyone because it went away. And then they come in with something that's a lot more advanced. But had they actually seen someone, either their primary care doctor or mentioned it to them, or a urologist, early on said, you know, I have some blood in the urine, they would have to work up and whether that it's a bladder cancer or a kidney cancer would have been caught earlier. So not, not to sound like an alarmist and say every time someone has blood in the urine, it, it's, it's indicative of something bad, or any time someone has difficulty urinating, it's something bad. But it is something that we have to pay attention to as men and, and seek the help of either our primary care physician or our urologist to be able to die, do a deep dive and figure out what's going on. Well, it goes back to everything that we just said about having, it's not just a one-off, oh, there's urine in my, there's blood in my urine. It's, hey, I'm gonna call my doctor and I'm gonna pop in and you can even, um, with where we are in the world and everybody lives on Zoom, you can do a teleconference, isn't that? Yeah, to I mean, Telehealth. Exactly. And just say, hey, this is what happened, these are my signs and symptoms. Hey, Greg, come on into my office and let's chat. I'm still working on doing a rectal exam on Zoom, but Guys, see, until it's then. <laughs> it's a lot easier then. So until then, I think you can see your doctor online, you can get the tests ordered, do the imaging, and then go in for an exam. That way you're saving time and you're getting all the information kind of gathered up. So when you see the, consult see the doctor in consultation, you can get more out of it that way. There's also more information that you're giving. Exactly. Um, what is the age for someone to make an appointment with a urologist to come in and get their prostate checked? I think somewhere between the age of 45 and 50 would and be... And that's without any... Any, any symptoms at all, exactly. And even without any... Okay, since there's history in my family... Right. Then, with my dad. So with family history, you want to start doing this prostate cancer screening 10 years before the age of diagnosis okay. for that loved one. So some men are diagnosed in the age of, uh, you know... I, I have a recent patient who just... Uh, I uh, got diagnosed and I took out his prostate, he's 49 years old. So my advice to him was, when you, your kid is 40 years old, start having him see his, see his pri primary care physician and get a PSA done and rectal exam done. That's really early, but again, he was diagnosed at the age of 49, so. And that's, that's also what. having a deep dive conversation with your family, you know, parents tell your kids, hey, grandpa, uncle, anybody, you know, uh, prostate cancer, colon cancer, uh, for, for females, breast cancer, you know, and really just put it all out there, especially with where we are now in the world, and we can do genetic testing. We can have conversations with our doctor, you know. And again, m lucky for me that you knew my dad, you knew there was a history, boom, we are seeing each other. Right. And it's every year we are having a date, and it's just a great conversation. Thank you. Uh, in regards to, I know you said that there are no signs. Oh, you know, here's my question. 
the rectal exam, why are men so afraid of it? You know, um, I will say I don't know the answer to that question fully, but I think there is some uh, cultural differences that, that certain exams are, are difficult for not just men, but also women. You know, a lot of women don't want to have a vaginal exam, but don't want to have a breast exam. And I think because there may be a, you know, some, some elements of sexual innuendo uh, implied, men may be having difficulty having that exam, just like women may have difficulty having a breast exam. But the point of the matter is when you're having an exam by a professional who's, who's a physician, whether it's a urologist or, or a breast specialist or, or, or just a primary physician, they are doing it because this is how they get to feel your insides and figure out what's going on with you. And so there's nothing that really uh, goes beyond that. And, and I would say in the past 15 years, we, we have made tremendous strides in spreading the word uh, in our uh, community that this is something that is an okay thing to do and it's not doesn't make you less of a man or a woman to have these important screening examinations done. And before we already wrap out, uh, just to alleviate some nervousness and tension, the rectal exam, what, lasts between five and 10 seconds? Very brief. You're gonna get through it, I promise. More Dr. Ibrahimi when we come back, don't go away. Welcome back, the entire conversation about, is about us men and our health. And joining us is one of my favorites, Dr. Kamyar Ibrahimi from Adventist Health Glendale. You know, doctor, before we dive into, well, again, I just wanna do signs and symptoms of prostate cancer, is do you feel that most men, and it could be men, it's also men and women, do not come to see you because of, they're afraid of what they're gonna hear or find out? You know, that's a good point, Greg. I, I think most folks, men and women, don't like to go to the doctor because they don't want to hear bad news or that they're afraid of what's going to be found. So, uh, and that could be the reason why p patients don't want to go to, through a rectal exam or, or breast exam, for example, we were talking about in the last segment. So that's a really good point. Uh, and and I, th I think that, that to, to a certain extent, could be a uh, uh, reason why, but y you have to deal with what you know and not worry about what you don't know. And I think that philosophy really needs to carry That's through. Great. Is that you don't know what you're gonna find out. And so you just have to kind of be proactive about it and realize that whatever is found, there will be solutions for. And here's what's so great, because we, we've talked about this a lot on the show and I talk about it with you personally, is you know, there's, there's a relationship. And I come to you in the past 10 years that I've seen you, you say we have to work on this, work on this, work on this. You were great here, not great there. And it's a relationship. So why do so many people come to you for a solution, but I don't maintain my side of, the, my side of it? And then if something bad happens, well, doctor, look what, and the truth is, you're telling me what to do to live a healthy, happy, long life. If I don't maintain my part of this agreement, the only person I'm looking at is myself. It's, it's, it's very hard and very true. You know, uh, the, the patient-doctor relationship is very difficult to understand and also navigate. You know, uh, I've been a patient myself. My wife's been a patient uh, in Glendale Adventist, actually. And also, uh, I'm a physician. So I've seen both sides of the coin. And I can tell you, um, it's, it's, an e it's not an easy thing because... Sure there's a lot of different personalities out there when it comes to patients. And as a physician, we have to tailor what we advise based on how it's gonna be perceived. But it doesn't mean that uh, we shouldn't do our job of at least showing up as a, as, as a patient. To, and I'm talking as a patient right now, uh, to the physician's uh, forum and, and office and discuss whatever it is that's ailing us. Um, I want to go back to um, signs and symptoms of prostate Please. cancer, which I think was my, as, as my focus and, and, and really my, one of my passions is that um, we have to uh, recognize that a lot of men uh, will suffer through difficulty urinating and getting up at night. And not only themselves, but their partner will 
suffer with them when they wake up and have to go to the bathroom. And also, difficult, uh, and also just pure pain, burning with urination, et cetera. Um, not all of those things mean prostate cancer. And I think uh, actually it could be a benign prostate enlargement. And so when patients are suffering with those things, there's medications that we can em employ that typically improve things. Uh, and if not, then there's procedures and surgeries that can be offered to help obstruction of the urinary tract. Um, another thing I'm going to talk about, talk about is the bleeding in the urine, um, which can be a sign of prostate cancer, but it could also be uh, a sign of other things like kidney stones, bladder cancer, kidney cancer. Could it be a UTI as well? It could also be a UTI. Which also goes infection. to what you were saying, the burning. Exactly. In the urination, so, which could also be an STD as well. It could be STD also. Um, um, and so pa patient's age is uh, important when you consider that. Uh, but, you know, if you're seeing a uh, physician and they're asking these questions, they're not just trying to, you know, they're, they're, figure, they're trying to put a picture together. And, and if they're not getting a full history from you, they're not going to be able to order the right tests and come, to, come up with the right diagnosis in a timely fashion. So what I encourage my patients uh, to do is if, if I feel any hesitancy, that they're afraid to tell me something. So listen, I'm, I'm not asking you questions because I want to know so I can put it on CNN. I'm asking you because I'm trying to figure out what's going on with you so I can give you better advice. And so that actually then kind of melts away all the barriers and they say, okay, well, you know, actually this is what happened to me and et cetera. So having that conversation and picking the right physician that you can communicate with, I'm not just saying a urologist, but a physician that you see once a year for, for your primary care or however often, it's so important because they're the ones who are going to remember that five years ago you had this issue and they treated you one way and they don't have to necessarily science it out any further when you come in with the same problem uh, as opposed to some, someone who's seen them as a first time. And so, um, you know, this, this is a little pet peeve of mine that I see patients jump between physicians and, and, and trying to figure out, you know, who gets, gets them the best advice, you know, that may be fine if you're trying to get an opinion about how to deal with, for example, prostate cancer. But often the physician that diagnosed you and has been your patient, has been your physician for a long time, will actually come up with the best solution for you and allow them to guide you through that process. Well, there's also a history and people, I think, jump from one doctor to another because they're gonna ultimately hear what they think they need to hear. That's true, and I can't change that. We can't change no. that. But, but however, not everything follows the patient with the chart. Sure. And that history and personal relationship is so important. It's, it's called uncover and discover. Uh, before we already go to our next break, uh, signs and symptoms of bladder cancer. What are those? Uh, so this is actually one of those things that uh, we mentioned earlier. Uh, often patients will have an episode of blood in the urine. And that's one of the first, if not only, signs of bladder cancer where patients come in. And so, um, and often, unfortunately, because, for example, a urinary tract infection can present that way, uh, they're given antibiotics and symptoms go away and they think, about well, it must have been a UTI. But I think it's really important if someone's had blood in the urine for them to absolutely be referred to a urologist. That's the number, if anyone's gonna walk away with any advice today is if you have blood in the urine, make sure you see a urologist. And it's also not a one-off and be like, this is what happened. There's blood in my urine. Uh, more Dr. Ibrahimi when we come back, don't go away. Welcome back. Did you know that Adventist Health Glendale is ranked among one of the best hospitals in Southern California, earning three straight five-star ratings from the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services and our 16th straight A grade for patient safety from the Leap, Leap Frog Group? To everyone at Adventist Health Glendale, thank you for all that you do for all of us. Joining us from Adventist Health Glendale is one of my favorites, Dr. Kamyar Ibrahimi, and we are going to continue our conversation about us guys and our health. You know, doctor, uh, thank you for being so genuinely transparent. Thank you. That is why I am one of your patients, because you are present, you tell me the truth, even if there's things that I don't wanna hear, 
and you are in it to make sure that I'm as healthy as can be. So thank you for that. Thank you. Uh, bladder cancer. Um, someone in my family uh, suffered from it. Uh, used to smoke, as you know, I smoke two packs a day for 20 years. I come in once a year for an extensive test. So uh, bladder cancer, like we mentioned, first thing is uh, if you have any bleeding in the urine, see a urologist. The workup is a CT scan imaging and cystoscopy. Um, uh, is it curable? I think for the most part, if it's caught early, yes. And when you say uh, early, beginning stage one, two, but anything past that. Exactly. Um, and, um, and so if, it, any, if there's any blood in the urine, even, even if you cannot see it, but the doctor says, you know, I saw some red cells in the, in the urine, you should be referred to a urologist. And that, you know, may be overdoing it, but again, we'll catch a lot of patients early that are curable. Um, the other thing that I want to mention is that not every patient who has blood in the urine has prostate cancer or bladder cancer, but, you know, you just want to kind of make sure that you're covering all those bases. Another one of my favorite topics to talk about is kidney stones. And um, I've had kidney stones myself, and I can tell you it's, it wasn't fun. In fact, I, I haven't not. I'm lucky. Lucky you, <laughs> yes. Uh, but the point is, um, it's not just a matter of uh, uh, trial of passage uh, or a rite of passage, so to speak, when you have a kidney stone. It, it's one of those things that is a lifelong thing, and with current technologies that we have, we can often perform outpatient procedures for kidney stones and patients are back, back to their baseline in a week and, and, and uh, they're fine. In regards to men in the prostate and just men's health, uh, erectile dysfunction, could that be a handful of things? You know, uh, ED uh, can often be a sign of cardiovascular health and, and a lot of patients, a lot of friends ask me, hey, what can I do to improve my risks for ED, getting prostate cancer, other cancers, et cetera? And I say, well, we can give you tailored advice that's good for prostate or kidney or bladder, or we can just keep it basic. Everyone knows what's good for the heart. So what's good for the heart is often good for kidney, kidneys, bladder, and prostate. So patients if they take care of their heart, they, they're taking care of their bladder and prostate. So what's good for their heart? Exercise, like you mentioned at the beginning of the, uh, of the show. Uh, eating healthy, so uh, not a lot of sugar, uh, healthy fats, and lean proteins. Uh, Talk about cigarettes. Cigarettes, got to avoid it. I'm sorry. It's, uh, it's 2022, almost 2023. Make it your, your resolution to quit smoking. It's good for you, it's good for your family, and it, 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 it'll save your life. Uh, so exercise, diet, um, and smoking are the top three things you can do to keep your health uh, in check, keep your heart in check, and uh, by default, help your prostate and your bladder. In regards to... Um Health and exercise. Uh, what is the minimum and maximum that you recommend? You know, uh, it's hard to kind of make some people do the 150 minutes of exercise per week. That because uh, everyone has an excuse. Yeah, but so I tell patients, do what you can, do what you can. Uh, try for the best, but if you can do 20 minutes a week, that's where you start, and then next week you do a little bit more. You walk out your front door get your mail, come back, that's one. You walk out your front door, get your mail, walk down the street, that's two. A friend of mine said to me once, I had seen her and she put on a lot of weight and she wasn't healthy at all. She said, well, I just don't know how I got here. I'm like, I can tell you. And she said, well, you look at you, you. And I said, I made a choice. So as much as I make the choice to have the Diet Coke or have the cookie and just not be healthy, I now make healthier choices one step turned into a block, turned into two blocks, turned into a mile, turned into over 30 pounds. And just making baby step choices That's it. to be as healthy as you possibly can be. Uh, do Kegels do anything for men? Absolutely, I think it's uh, one of those things that men should do just like women do. 
uh, for their uh, pelvic floor health and uh, to improve their symptoms. Uh, and do you recommend a certain age to start doing Kegels or it doesn't matter? Probably doesn't matter, but as, as you get older, just like us, um, That's nice that I think me. it's probably Thanks. time to kind of consider when you're over 50 to start doing some Kegels exercises. Uh, the final thoughts on men's health and prostate health and what we can do to be as healthy as possible. Don't be afraid of talking to your provider, uh, physician, um, regarding what concerns you, however minor you may think it is. It may actually be the key to figuring out exactly what's going on with you and getting you the timely diagnosis. Uh, you know I love you, and I thank you for all that you are thank and you all that you do. And um, we have a date next fall. Awesome. I'm going to bring you. It. I'm going to bring you flowers. Okay. Uh, so you heard it from Dr. Ibrahimi. Uh, most importantly, have a conversation. Be fearlessly honest with your doctor, and that also starts at home. Talk to your parent. Talk to your significant other, your wife, your husband, your your partner. Have a conversation, and also don't self-diagnose. You can find us on all types of social media. You can watch us on YouTube at Adventist Health Glendale, and also follow us on Facebook at AH Glendale, and you can always find me on at Gregory Zarian. Remember, the most important conversation you're going to have is about you and your health, so start talking. We'll see you next time. Thanks.